If you're not eating fish or you're not eating seafood or you're not eating algae and seaweed, which we'll talk about here in a minute, you're not going to, good chance you're not getting enough iodine. The goiter belt is located in this country, it's located where there's not a lot of, where people don't eat a lot of seafood. Goiter didn't really occur with people who, ate, who lived on the coastal part of, uh, of, the, of this country or other countries. It only occurred inland because iodine is readily available in seafood. DHA and EPA, by the way, are also great for your skin if you have inflammatory issues. DHA, EPA, omega-3s, these are anti-inflammatory. So for eczema, for psoriasis, I have seen the most dramatic improvements in eczema and psoriasis in three days and four days simply by supplementing with fish oil. Now, I'm not saying that you only want fish oil as an essential fatty acid. I'm not saying you only want seafood. You do need the others. They're all important. Flax is important. ALA, remember, is the master omega-3, and that's only in flax and in seeds. So you need your seeds, you need your flax, but you also need your fish and your fish oil, especially if you're dealing with eczema or psoriasis or if you're pregnant. Or just, just, it's a good idea to make sure that you're doing the seafood, as long as you're not, of course, a vegan. If you're a vegan, well, you can eat, well, you should be eating a lot of algae. Vegans should be eating lots of algae, lots of seaweed. And soon you'll be able to get uh, algae liquid as well. Now, I'm not saying that omega-3 deficiencies, by the way, cause any of these problems. I, they may, as far as I know, but I, that's not the point. What I'm trying to say is omega-3s, DHA, EPA are must-haves if you're dealing with eczema and psoriasis. And now, where do you think uh, the fish are getting their omega-3s, by the way? Where do you think the DHA and EPA is coming from? Seaweed, plankton, algae. The fish eat the plankton, they eat the algae, they eat the seaweed, and... They make omega-3s. So as it turns out, not only is earthly grass, terrestrial grass, super duper powerful when it comes to nutrition, but so is ocean grass. And this is why this is my all-time favorite nutrient-dense food, is ocean grass, algae, seaweed, seaweed salads. Seaweed is amazing. By the way, seaweed is amazing for your skin too. Topically, seaweed can have some beneficial effects on your skin. If you want to make your own skin mask, go to a skin treatment mask. Go to the health foods or go to the Asian market and buy, or the health food store for that matter, and buy nori. Uh, I guess they call them nori rolls or whatever the whatever the seaweed is. There's dozens of different kinds. They come in little sheets. Soak the sheet. Put it on your face. You can make a nice mask. Kind of, it might break up a little bit, but still. You get polysaccharides, moisture factors, not to mention the minerals like magnesium, for example. Green always means magnesium, by the way. So green seaweed, when you're seeing the green in seaweed, what you're seeing is magnesium, and magnesium is awesome for your, for your skin topically. It's not going to get inside necessarily, but on the very surface of the skin, it can act as a, as a skin softener. How interesting is it that the humblest little forms of life, these single-celled animals, these tiny little critters, invisible to the naked eye, plankton and algae, the things that grow on top of the ocean are the beginnings of all life. They're the beginning of the food chain and they are, as tiny as they are, they are among nature's most powerful food. There's a reason why these little seaweed entities, these little microbes, these little single cell seaweed critters are so powerful as nu nutrients. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin health questions, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about seaweed, the omega-3s, the ocean. There's a reason why life is so dense in the ocean. It's because the ocean is like a battery. It's a supercharged electromagnetic conducting matrix. It's pure energy, ocean water, seawater. It's amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. And all you got to do is witness the, the teemingness of the life force in the ocean, except for the part that we killed off, of course, the dead zones. Seagrass and seaweed is especially powerful. Seagrass and seaweed are actually little tiny cells strung together. They're single cells. This is what makes them so important. Single cells are critically valuable because single cells have everything you need. They're a living cell. And when we eat them, they make our cells. All cells are pretty much the same, you know? 
from a cell perspective, the cells that make up a bacteria are not all that much different from the cells that make up an animal. The cells that make up a fungus are not all that much different from the cells that make up a, a person. The cells that make up a seaweed are all, not all that much different from the cells that make up terrestrial life forms like us. And so when we eat cells, whether they're in the form of algae or nature's bounty uh, terrestrial cell, which we call an egg, an egg is an egg cell. When we eat an egg or an egg cell or when we eat seaweed or algae cells, or when we eat nutritional yeast or yeast cells, we get complete nutrition. This is what makes algae so valuable. You can use algae as a nutritional supplement. In fact, you can buy algae as a nutritional supplement or versions of algae, chlorella, is another one that you can buy, spirulina. These are single cell organisms and because they're single cells, they're complete cells, they have everything we need. Most of the food we eat is not cells, is not single cells. Vegetables can be, but once you process foods, they don't, they're not cells anymore. But when you eat an egg, as long as you don't process it too much, you don't fry it up too much, you're getting a complete cell. Same with a seaweed, as long as you don't process it too much. Eating a complete cell gives you everything you need and you can truly subsist from a nutritional standpoint on algae, on seaweed. That's pretty cool, you guys. This is a food that is delicious if it's done correctly. It has every single nutrient that you need, every single essential nutrient that you need, and it's cheap. It grows on the ocean. This is so amazing. This is truly nature's bounty. The nutritional value represented by the nutritional value of algae and seaweed. Single cell creatures, complete units, self-contained nutritional entities, if you will. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first phone call. Angela in Florida. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello. Hey, Hi, Angela. Hey. What's up? Hey, how are you, Pharmacist Ben? I'm doing good. What's going on in Florida? Good. I have a quick question about food allergies and food allergy testing. Okay. I'm doing my best to keep out certain things, um, especially sugar, but I just feel like I can't get my digestive system right, so I was okay. going to go do a specialist and get a testing done. Um, however, I'm not sure if that's the best route to take. Um, not in my opinion, it's not. That. Specialists are, specialists exist for themselves. They don't exist for anybody else. There's nothing a specialist can do for you. And by the way, there's nothing a food allergy testing can do for you either. Because you don't know how, maybe you're reacting to something that your body's producing out of that food. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's not the food itself, but maybe it's something that's a processed byproduct of the food that your body's turning it into an allergen. That could be. Also, with food allergy testing, uh, the way they do it is they take, your, they take a specific food, a, sus a suspected food, and they put it in a Petri dish, and they see how it reacts in the Petri dish. You're not a Petri dish. You are a dynamic, multifaceted living being. You're not a Petri dish. It's not that simple. So people will find negatives with food that, they, that could be a problem or positives with foods that are not a problem. So I don't like allergy testing either. But you can be your own allergy test. And it's a really fun thing to do. Check this out, Angela. Get, take a food and eat it all day and start off with your favorite, most delicious food, the food that you, can't, that you love the most, and eat it all day long. What do you, what, what's your favorite? Do you have a, one particular weakness, pizza or something? Angela? Um, french fries. But... Spend all day eating french fries. Go to all the different McDonald's and all the different fast food joints in your, in, you know, in your, in your city and, and sample all the fries. Spend the entire day de doing fries. If you, get, if you notice that you break out, if you notice that you got uh, some kind of weird digestive health issue, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. You know, but the point is, is that you spend all day eating your favorite food and see what happens. You be the allergy test. That's what I would do. Or you, don't, you don't even need to spend all day eating it. But just eat it. Indulge. Enjoy your fries. Watch what happens. But don't eat anything else. Just eat the fries. You follow me? And then the next okay. day, do your next food. And the next day, do your next food. Why would we go to somebody else to tell us what we're allergic to? Think about it. And I'm not picking on you, Angela. I'm not at all picking on you. This is what we all do. But what is the logic to going to somebody else to tell us what we're allergic to? When I mean, you think about it that way. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's helpful. 
Okay, good. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate your Thank call. You. Hope we helped you. All right. You know what I'm saying? Listen, a specialist is going to take your money. He doesn't have a problem doing that. But why would we go outside of ourselves to have somebody tell us what's going on in our bodies? Are we that disconnected from our, the way our body responds to food? Eat the fries, see what happens. Eat the ice cream, see what happens. I was teasing a little bit about spending the whole day eating fries because everybody, anybody would get sick if they ate fries all day. But uh, when we eat fries, it's not the fries we like. It's the sugar and the fat and the salt. And there's a clue there for you guys. Sugar and fat and salt. The combination is completely irresistible, and food processors know this good and well. And this is why every city in every state, probably in every country, has pizza places and taco places and donut places and every other fried sugar, fat, and salt, fast food you can think of places on every block because these foods are cheap and they're addicting. We are addicted to them. And then you throw in the high-tech uh, biochemistry, high-tech uh, organic chemistry that gets thrown into foods to keep us permanently addicted. This is why we have a food problem. We're being manipulated. Our strings are being pulled by food processors, by cereal manufacturers, by cracker companies, by candy companies. These commercials and the marketing and the billboards and the sponsorships and the endorsements from Mars and Kellogg's and Nestle and it really is unconscionable on some level. It, it really is hard to fathom how a CEO can live with themselves. But other than that, we're responsible too. You know, this is why understanding how the body's working. This is why understanding our body's responses to these things is so important. Otherwise our strings are going to be pulled. Otherwise we're just going to be puppets. And that's, in, that really is infuriating. That should be, that should really tick us off. That's why I say, Every time we drive by McDonald's, we should be giving them the finger, let alone going in there and purchasing that, the swill. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Skinny Robert, I believe. Is that you, Skinny Robert? Yes, I'm Skinny Robert. Skinny, skinny Robert. How much, what are we up to now? 40 pounds, oh, 50 pounds, 60 pounds? Oh, shoot, over 100. Over 100. Oh, my right, goodness. Right. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, my and, goodness. And are we... Another 50. Hey, are you doing Super Saturday still in Colorado? I don't hear... Yeah, yeah. When's the yes, next I one? I am. When is uh, the next one? 20th. 20th, uh, uh, next week. Longmont. Next yep. week, all right. Next oh, in Longmont? And then there's a, yeah, in Longmont, there's another oh. one, 27th. Down in Colorado Springs, so that's a little far. But I'll be de- uh, maybe I'll come to Longmont next week. That uh, yeah, it's supposed to be in Tom's place. Okay, good deal. Thank you. What's going on today? <laughs> hey, I ran into one of my buddies last night. Um, uh, he's just getting ready to start uh, Longevity products, but he's like uh, he had two, three years ago. He had a heart attack. They put in two stints. Had him on uh, Effient or something like that for a couple of years, and he's off that now with. Uh, Effie, uh, I don't know what that is. He some had kind a st- of blood thinner. Oh, oh he's on, okay, he's on blood thinner. Yeah. Is he a diabetic? He and, well, he's got to be a diabetic, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure, but he's down to 175 pounds, so he's lost some weight. Good. However, um, he just started experiencing blood and blood clots in his urine. He's going in that's for, not good. for that. No, no not. that's not good. Does, so, now, I assume he doesn't have a urinary tract infection or anything like that? No, no. They took they, they did tests. They took him off what, whatever antibiotics they had him on. They said, no, stop that. It's not an infection. How old is he? He's 62. All right. So pounds. kidney, more than likely kidney, but it could be the prostate too. Something uh-huh. along, Something in that area. You know, right, right. something in the plumbing area, so to speak. But with the history, with his history of heart issues and, and weight issues, I'm, I'm more than likely kidney problems. So he's got to start to take care of his blood sugar issues. That's the most important right. thing with kidneys. Does he have kid, history of kidney stones or anything like that? I don't know. Okay. So yeah. kidney is where I'd be focusing. It could be the prostate too, but I would, my guess is the kidney. That means more water after all his meals. Dilute his okay. blood. That means zero tolerance for anything that spikes his blood sugar, plus the sweeties, uh, Beyond okay. Tangy Tangerine, 
the Beyond Osteo. We don't talk about the Beyond Osteo for sugar, but it really is important for blood sugar too. Magnesium is. So making sure he's doing the Beyond Osteo. You might want to throw in the Immortalium. Uh, fiber can help him.